Hello, welcome to IT TechX webinar. My name is Yuhan. I'm a senior technology analyst at IT TechX. Today, I'm happy to talk you through about the advancement in 2.5D and 3D semiconductor packaging technologies. The content of this webinar today is based, based on IT TechX latest research in this area and the latest report, which you can already find online, is titled Advanced Semiconductor Packaging Tech Technologies 2024 to 2034, including forecast, technology benchmark, market applications, and so on. ID TechX is a company that provides market intelligence on emerging technologies. As you can see over here, we cover a wide range of topics from 3D printing, wireless technologies, advanced materials, EV, energy storage, semiconductor, photonics, and so on. And uh, as a company, we offer our services through, ch through three channels. The first is like we offer off-shelf reports, um, but also we also offer subscription package that allow our customers to see our research on a rolling basis. I will introduce more detail about our subscription service in my next slide. And um, the third that we offer is consulting. We do bespoke consulting work. ID TechX subscription package is a great way for companies that want to see our research on a rolling basis. So once you become our subscriber, you will have access to our company profile, uh, to our company internal portal. So what are the items that are included that you can find on this internal portal? That includes unlimited comp company profiles that you can view. Uh, technology benchmark, market forecasts, event summaries, and highlight, for example, as our uh, analysts, we always want to do primary research. That means we go to events to talk to people, and when we come back, the, an the analysts will write up in a form of presentation or company profiles documenting the discussion that they have with the companies that are uh, maybe of your interest. And that's something that you can have a limited view in our portal. And apart from that, we also have research summaries, company slideshows that are for you to read in our portal. And for the number of research reports and analyst access time, briefing, advisory sessions, that will depend on the package that you have with us. Why ID TechX? How do we differentiate ourselves from other competitors? So first, all of the analysts have STEM background that enable us to have deep technical as well as market understanding for the industry that we're looking to. Second, ID TechX was established back in 1999. Over 20 years experience allowed us to have connections over 250,000 global contacts where we gather our insights through in-person interview, site visits and event attendance. Last but not least, we focus on the application of technology innovations, means that we access key technologies and their application to provide a complete picture of opportunities across in essential industries. As mentioned previously, the content of this webinar is based on ID TechX's latest report, Advanced Semiconductor Packaging Technologies 2024 to 2034. And this slide gives you an overview of what are included in the report. So first, um, look into the rise of advanced semiconductor packaging technologies by delving, diving into like what are the evolutions of packaging technologies, ev examine the challenges in transistor IC development, explore how the chip-led concepts together with the heterogeneous integration are driving the adoption of advanced semiconductor packaging technologies. Next, we deep dive into 2.5D and 3D packaging technologies. So this chapter, as you can see over here, is segmented by different interposer materials between silicon, among silicon, organic, and glass. So in this chapter, we discuss technology roadmap of each material that I mentioned before, and you will see a thorough analysis of each technology, including technology benchmark, what are the target applications of each material, of what, what are the key players that are using the materials and developing it, and the many manufacturing barriers for each material. Further on, we conduct an in-depth examination of key companies in this area in advanced semiconductor packaging technologies. And this includes TSMC, Intel, MCOR, ASE, and SPIL. 
So each um, section access the company's solutions, what are the clients, what are the target applications of their solution they propose, and what's the current um, technology development status, and what's the future roadmap. Next, we move on to this market application overview. So in this chapter, aim to provide a detailed overview of critical markets for advanced semiconductor packaging technologies that include high performance computing, AI, HPC, co-packaged optics, autonomous vehicles, 5G and consumer electronics. And uh, there are also several case studies over here present numerous um, business cases that illustri illustrate the applications of advanced semiconductor packaging technology across various fields. Then we also discuss like beyond current advanced semiconductor packaging technology moving into futuristic monolithic 3D, what are the challenges, what are the key materials over there that, that the uh, research institute or company looking to develop, what are the applications for this monolithic 3D and what's the future roadmap. Last but not least, we have a 10-year granular market forecast summary based on 2.5D and 3D packaging technologies. So if you're interested, please do not hesitate to contact us or directly visit the web page through the link over here. Before diving into 2.5D, 3D semiconductor packaging technologies, I would like to give you a quick overview of advanced semiconductor packaging technologies overall to set the ground for better understanding for 2.5D and 3D packaging. Here shows the evolution of semiconductor packaging technologies from 1D to, to 3D. So 1D, everything happened at a board level. Package chips assemble on a PCB board. And moving on to 2D, things right now happening on a unifying substrate, enable finer, finer connection, shorten interconnect dens uh, dis distance, and improving interconnection densities. And then further move on to waiver level integration, everything is more miniaturized, and uh, 2.5D and 3D. So 2.5D is where you have a unifying either a substrate, it can be silicon interposer or organic RDL or glass interposer, and then you place the chips that you want, you want to package them together and place them on top of this interposer. Uh, more detail about this different uh, type of 2.5D structure I'll explain in my next uh, couple of slides. Um, but 2.5D in comparison moving to 3D, 3D is really the uh, integration of an active die on top of another active die. That's how we call 3D. And as you can imagine, from 1D to 3D, interconnection density improve, level of application also improve, but that reflects in a cost and process challenges. So there are four key factors for advanced semiconductor packaging technologies. Power, performance, area, and cost. So first, you want to have a better power efficiency of your package, and that will be through the development of new packaging technologies. You want better performance of your package that enable higher bandwidth, shorter communication length, by, for example, increasing the IO, done, IO uh, input output densities. Area, so in a trend, for example, for high performance computing chips, we see a large package, a larger packaging area is now being requested. And in a form of like 3D integration, you want to keep the Z axis as small as possible. And the cost, so for packaging, the cost has always been a key factor. So continue to reduce costs is obviously critical, no matter like the no matter how advanced the semiconductor packaging technology is. Here I'm going to discuss where are the key markets for advanced semiconductor packaging technologies. As you can see over here, segmented into four categories. The first is on the HPC and AI, is also the most important uh, market to watch out for right now. And as you see, there are lots of uh, applications that can adopt and is already adopting advanced semiconductor packaging technology from accelerators, 
Notably, you know, NVIDIA has been using TSMC advanced semiconductor packaging technologies for the high-end uh, GPU accelerator for a long time. We also see the use cases of, uh, for example, AMD and um, Intel having their high-end CPU using either 3D integration, uh, 3D packaging technology or 2.5D. And high bandwidth memory right now is on 3D micro bumping technologies, but we have seen demonstrations going forward for advanced 3D packaging using hybrid bonding. And network speed, uh, switch, co-package optics is a very important topic right now. And we don't cover that in this webinar, but detailed discussion is in a new report in the new advanced semiconductor packaging 2024 to 2034 report. So this is really the key markets right now for advanced semiconductor packaging technology. We see a lot of solutions that are brought, bringing up on the table are dedicated for the use of data centers, AI. OK, but of course, we can use advanced semiconductor packaging technology in other areas as well that include, for example, like the applications that require high performance computing that require much better computing power than it is right now. For example, like in 5G, 6G communication, high-end silicon for compute require FPGA, for example. FPGA has been uh, sort of under uh, using adopting 2.5D packaging technology for quite some time. And we know that for high frequency communication, because the signal automation is very bad for high frequency, and plus right now due to the nature of the frequency, the antenna size is very small. So how do you nicely pack in an integrated way antenna with the transceivers um, is very important. On the automotive side, especially on the autonomous driving side, we see, we see some high-end chips for um, autonomous driving computing module that are likely to adopt 2.5, uh, to adopt advanced semiconductor packaging technologies. And apart from that, you also have consumer electronics, for example, like high-end CPUs used for gaming, for workstation, or in the case of um, mobile. For example, Apple has been using TSMC's info POP on um, packaging the application processes modules. Now let's look together at the advancement in 2.5D and 3D semiconductor packaging technologies. So here gives an overview of semiconductor packaging technologies uh, categorized by different interconnect technique. And that's go directly to see this wave level packaging and below it, it has 2.5D and 3D. So 2.5D, as I mentioned, it has three different types of interposer. One is silicon based, one is organic based, and one is glass based interposer. And under each interposer type, there are some structure differences. For example, like silicon interposer through silicon via, silicon bridge type, organic phenyl RDL or organic interposer using, for example, ABF um, as a substrate and glass interposer. And on the 3D, there's like hybrid bonding, elimination of like underfill and direct use of this copper, copper direct bonding or micro bond that we commonly see in, for example, high bandwidth memory. And in the next couple of slides, I will focus on the 2.5D part. So here I want to show you the packaging structure of how different 2.5D uh, solutions look like. Otherwise, I know I understand it sometimes it can be uh, slightly confusing. So for 2.5D silicon interposer, what it means is like your chips are packaged on top of this silicon dummy wafer, usually based on 65 nanometer process node, and it's a passive silicon wafer doesn't have any fun fun functionalities. Um, but you can see over here, uh, in order to connect the chips with the package, you see we have this through silicon via as a vertical line. And in between the chips, it will have a horizontal uh, RDL based on silicon dioxide. And uh, we also see variation under this silicon 2.5D silicon based technology. We see this silicon bridge can be embedded in a substrate, for example, like 
replace silicon instead of using a complete full silicon as that's more costly we see the transitions for example going to like okay only for this critical connection point between chips that we use silicon bridge uh, the other parts we use either abf substrate for example or can be a fan out rdl and another option is like completely eliminate uh, the use of silicon, which is organic fan out RDL to connect chips to the package. Um, here, what I didn't show is a glass packet packaging. It would be very similar to what silicon 2.5D silicon interposer looks like. It just right now the silicon dummy waiver is changed to a glass panel. Now we have a better understanding of what 2.5D packaging is and what type of structures are involved. Let's look together into the technology development trend, barriers, challenges, and solutions for 2.5D. So first, before discussing that, it's important to note that um, the key, key target market for 2.5D packaging is high-performance computing. So for high-performance computing chips, the first requirement is that well the package areas needs to be supposedly to be larger the better as as the uh, designer can house more computing units together with memory units in a single package in a tightly space so to improve to boost the performance and that's also reflect in the requirements for packaging area so ideally like okay now the trend is going to beyond 4000 millimeter square However, for incumbent technologies, which is silicon interposer, it encounters a challenge in terms of reticle limit, as the limitation is currently right, right now for like four, four times reticle, but going beyond that, going to like, for example, 6,000 millimeter uh, square would be basically very challenging, impossible to do. And therefore, we see currently that the players that involve their shifting directions from silicon interposer to silicon bridge in order to enable larger packaging area and apart from that continue to deliver cost uh, reduction as uh, yes silicon is cheap cheap but in comparison to alternative materials like organic and glass it is more expensive so if in a case a package can be used can can use organic materials and deliver, deliver the same performance it will be used if in a case where glass packaging is give better performance in comparison to silicon and yes it will be used and apart from that both materials organic and glass enable panel level packaging which can further leverage the cost effectiveness but obviously there are a lot of challenges involved in terms of like for example using organic materials or glass packaging to replace silicon and the challenge involved in which is the, 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 the last development trend highlight over here in terms of performance and that reflects in for example like the device reliability as now you have like okay chips is based on silicon and the materials silicon bridges silicon as well but the material around it is organic materials and in a glass, in the case of using glass, it will be glass substrates. And so different components have different um, thermal uh, coefficient of thermal expansion. And that will cause a problem when it goes through like many reflow processes, like, okay, different thermal expansions, you might cause warpage. And that reduces the device reliability, which is really obviously not desired. And that's why like we see a lot of uh, momentum and we see a lot of research continue to go on in terms of like what, finding what, what is the right organic materials with reason for CTE and Young's modulus and how do we continue to improve the manufacturing techniques uh, that say to maintain to to reduce the line space are the aligned space features so that it fits uh, well it's on par with the, what silicon can deliver and for glass packaging well apart from those materials challenge, challenges other challenges including for example the supply chain the ecosystem maturity is also another topic but due to the time constraint uh, I don't I 
like I won't touch that, but there will be uh, well two proper chapters discussing the benefits, the challenges, supply chain ecosystem in terms of using organic material or glass packaging materials. So if you're interested in, please look into the reports or, or feel free to contact us for further information. On the current slide, we see the players that are involved in 2.5D advanced semiconductor packaging technologies and the solution they offer. As you can see, I further segmented those companies into two groups based on their traditional role in the semiconductor supply chain. On the right hand side, we see traditional offsets, including ASE, SPIL, and MCOR. On the left hand side, we see traditional foundries, including TSMC and IDM, including Samsung and Intel. And I further color coded the solution each company offer based on the interposer insulating materials that they use. And as you can see, um, the solutions over here, the prominent one are either silicon based or organic based. So silicon based is the current incumbent technologies that are used in wide range of uh, well, HPC products. And as we discussed previously in silicon based uh, solution, Due to the packaging requirement going larger and larger, we see the transition from silicon interposer solutions to silicon bridge solution. And uh, the question might come across in terms of like for for example for traditional offsets, their expertise lies in like well organic materials manufacturing packaging, not in not as in the case of like. TSMC, Samsung, Intel, those traditional foundries, IDM, they have high expertise in semiconductor, uh, in silicon manufacturing. So where do they get this uh, silicon interposer and silicon bridge from? So the collaboration links we see established between like those offsets with other foundries, including UMC and global foundries, that those foundries supply those silicon interposers, silicon bridge for offset to develop their own 2.5D silicon based solutions. Apart from two uh, silicon based solutions, we also see like organic based solutions are also, well, not just offered by OSET, but also foundries, IDM as a cheaper alternative to silicon solutions targeting like lower end high performance computing products that are more cost sensitive or consumer electronics. And uh, we see one uh, green color code, which is glass packaging. So people who follow this field probably not uh, well, fairly familiar with the news that Intel last year, they sort of um, showcased the roadmap of using glass packaging in their products in the future, and then demonstrating the benefits of using glass. And uh, so due to the time constraint in this webinar, I didn't really discuss glass packaging into detail, but um, in the report, I have a dedicated chapter discussing what's the future of the glass packaging, what are the manufacturing challenges, what are the ecosystem challenges, and what are the future applications, specifically focusing on co-packaged optics in the report. So if you are interested, please do not hesitate to, to, to the report page and find out more information. And so now we have a better overview of the solutions offered by these players. Now the question, another question may come in terms of like, so who are the market leader? What are the current commercialized products uh, use which solutions? So currently uh, for high performance computing products, Coas is uh, well the, the the top choice to go. We see Nvidia's they predominantly use TSMC Coas products. Um, going forward. And uh, the rationale behind is that obviously TSMC has developed COAS and use commercialize it for many years before all sets step in or other companies step in. And they have created a very good reputation recognition in the industry. And for silicon industry, it's important to have this um, well, reputation in terms of you need to demonstrate your solution work for, for for the products they want to deliver. And so for those followers in terms of like, for example, OSA companies, other IDMs want to follow suit, it's important that you co to continue to demonstrate to the clients that the solutions not only deliver the performance requires, but also the reliability, stability of the package is also of importance. And so 
now we sort of put a sort of a stop on introducing 2.5D advanced semiconductor technologies. And next slide, we'll move on to 3D packaging technologies. To talk about 3D packaging technologies, we need to discuss the evolution of bumping technologies. As you can see, uh, well, the most mature is obviously the C4 bumps, where it's commonly used on the flip chip, for example, on the PCB board. And uh, you see the bumping pitch, meaning the distance in between two adjacent balls, are around like 100 to 300 micrometer. And the material is based on tin, silver, soda balls. And, but in order to adopt to the final features of different substrate of the package of the RDL, so we see the bumping scale continuously, like to 100 micrometer now facilitated by this copper pillar with uh, on the top have a tin silver soda cap. And then moving on to like further going down the scale to 40 micrometer, still based on similar process. And having this below 10 micrometer bumping pitch enabled right now only by copper copper direct hybrid bonding. So as you can see over here, the difference between copper copper hybrid bonding and the rest of the bumping is that for copper copper hybrid bonding, your elimination of this tin silver cap, you only have this copper copper direct contact and in between the copper copper direct, uh, in between the copper copper is the dielectric layer. So what are the challenges in 3D hybrid bonding? So over here, I list three points, and each of those points are either related to the manufacturing requirement challenges or the cost. So cost and manufacturing are the two biggest challenges. So if we look one step deeper, is that so in order first on the manufacturing side, in order to achieve acceptable yields in terms of like bonding quality, the flat surface in between the two pieces that you want them to connect together, to connect together, the surface needs to be ex exceptionally flat. And that requires like tool requirements from like, for example, grinding tool and CMP tool. And second of all, is that in order to achieve great bonding quality, the the defect tolerance basically is zero, like it needs to be exceptionally clean. That means the requirements for the clean rooms needs to be, well, at least in the front end scale, like in the case of ISO 1000 for front end compared to ISO 10 for conventional back end. So having this strenuous like uh, clean room requirement restricts the border adoption of hybrid bonding in traditional package foundries. And last but not least, so hybrid bonding primarily relies on foundry, on foundry tools, particularly those from the front end, like for example, CMP tools, bonding tools, and that resulting in significant cost increase for packaging. Over here shows an overview of devices that make use of 3D hybrid bonding, including cases, backside illuminated CMOS image sensor, memory side, including 3D NAND flash, HBM high bandwidth memory and logic in terms of chiplet um, stacking and shows uh, for each application the device structure in terms of um, how they are stacking and the bonding process is it waiver to waiver or die to waiver the bumping pitch size where is it the technology direction going the market maturity and who are developing it so over here I want to highlight is the high bandwidth memory and chiplet, which I um, over here show in this red bracket. So we know that the 3D hybrid bonding is basically coming with the driving force of AI, because for example, in the high bandwidth memories, which is a key unit for like GPU AI computing unit, in order to improve the perform performance, it's important that to stake the DRAM there on top of each other with a small distance as possible. And currently, the incumbent technology is based on micro bumping, which we introduced earlier. It's difficult to go beyond like 10 micrometer, to go below 10 micrometer. And therefore, we see companies, key players like SK Hynix, TSM song, TSMC have been demonstrated using hybrid bonding um, for the next generation high bandwidth memories that last year. 
Another use case is chiplet. So for example, in the case as probably um, well known of in terms of like um, AMD together working together with TSMC using TSMC 3D hybrid bonding technologies to stack SRAM on logic for the consumer products like AMD Ryzen 7000 X3D CPU for desktops or Ryzen 9 X3D or and their EPYC processes for high performance computing. And we see that uh, for both use cases, the bonding process can be either waiver to waiver, die to waiver. The market maturity is so for high bandwidth memory, as mentioned before, the common technology is still micro bump. And hybrid bonding technology we think might come in the next generation or the next. And for chiplets, I think we will see more products from AMD coming up uh, in terms of using 3D packaging technologies. So last but not least, let's look at the players that are offering 3D packaging technology solutions. And uh, as you might already guess, that the players involved are basically those um, the three top semiconductor foundry leaders right now, TSMC, Intel, and Samsung, with TSMC being currently the leader in 3D, in, in 3D semiconductor packaging in terms of, and this is, we say that is based on the bumping pitch that currently the company can achieve as well as its commercial capability. So as mentioned before, like for chiplets products, TSMC has been used in AMD commercialized product. Intel has been, yes, demonstrated their hybrid bonding technology back in 2021 and also in 2022. But I haven't seen any products and any roadmap in terms of Intel commercializing their products. And Samsung's XX Cube involving micro bomb and hybrid bonding technologies, yes, um, in terms of, like, yes, has been demonstrated in academic publications. But in terms of ramping up to a scale for commercial production, still take some years. Before going to the summary, I would like to highlight again IT TechX Advanced Semiconductor Packaging Research Portfolio. So currently we have two market research reports in this area, one being an overview report of Advanced Semiconductor Packaging, which is the highlight of this webinar. Another report being focusing more on the materials and processing side of organic materials and silicon materials for advanced semiconductor packaging technologies. And both reports are released late last year so it's up to date and for the overview reports on the left hand side we focus more understanding like okay what's the current trend benchmark the comparison of each material in 2.5d 3d packaging what are the pair player dynamics in terms of like what are the key players doing what are the packaging solutions they are developing what's the technology roadmap who they are customers so on and how advanced semiconductor packaging technologies be, can be applied in four key application area that we look into high performance computing 5g 6g consumer electronics and autonomous vehicles on the other hand side the materials and processing for advanced semiconductor packaging technologies look detail into the key material, organic materials for insulation layer, for RDL, epoxy, underfill, and organic and inorganic dielectric for copper, copper hybrid, 3D hybrid bonding. So over here, we really deep dive to understand the processes for 2.5D and 3D packaging, looking into like material suppliers, or what materials they are developing to achieve the requirements from all sets, from foundries, for example, what are the trends, what are the existing barriers in like not just on the material selection, as well as the current manufacturing method, for example, and how this can be applied for 2.5D and 3D. So if you are interested um, in the reports, please do not hesitate to contact us or follow the link show over here to the report page. So a quick summary to end the webinar today. First, improving system bandwidth and power efficiency in next generation semiconductor packaging 
can be achieved by focusing on key areas like increasing IO routing density, reducing IO bumping size, exploring diverse dielectric materials, and enhance manufacturing processes. For 2.5D packaging specifically, uh, the trend going forward is that we will see larger area packaging coming up, and that will need to be enabled by silicon bridge structure. And we know that silicon bridge structure can be either embedded in organic substrate or in a fan out uh, structure. And since that both ways use organic materials, and that will lead to benefits, including like cost reduction uh, to achieve better performance. Um, it's important that the reliability, especially in the case of using organic materials, the device reliability is important. Continue to reduce the bumping size in order to increase routing density and choose the dielectric materials that enable device reliability at the same time finite line space. For 3D packaging, hybrid bonding 3D copper copper bonding reduce bumping pitch to below 10 micrometer and that will achieve 50,000 plus I.O. counts in next generation packaging. Challenges in 3D light manufacturing technique, for example, CMT, CMP to, uh, to enable exceptionally flat surface, bonding accuracy and cost in terms of how to reduce reliance on front end tools and heat management. In terms of the player, um, so TSMC is definitely a leading player in the advanced semiconductor packaging sec sector, especially in the case of 3D packaging. And thank you very much for your attention today. And if you'd like to know more about our research on advanced semiconductor packaging, please do not hesitate to contact us or directly write to me via email as shown over here. Thank you very much.